Hello, everybody. This is Gary Kay, and you're watching a video version of my daily rants and raves. And of course, we've been doing a lot of these lately because we're, we're moving towards Infocom, which is literally a week away. And um, I'm excited to be joined by TJ Adams. Uh, TJ uh, joined us last year, you may recall, and also launched a new division of uh, QSC. And I, I believe um, that your, your title's changed since last year. So TJ, first of all, good morning and tell us uh, what the latest is with you personally. Well, good morning, Gary. Thanks for having me on. And yes, my uh, title has changed since last year, but it's funny how we do the job, but then end up uh, later getting credit for it uh, in the rears, I suppose. Uh, but uh, no, I'm the director of product development or product management, either way you want to look at it, at uh, QSC for installed systems business unit. So we launched that business unit about two years ago, and I was uh, a part of that whole uh, thinking around uh, splitting out our BUs. So Thanks for asking about it, and uh, I'm really excited to keep going uh, with what I'm up to here at QC. Well, we're going to talk today about some of the new stuff that you have at Infocom. Specifically, we're going to talk about a new AV to USB bridging solution. Um, I think a lot of people who are have done video conferencing, web-based video conferencing, meeting-based video conferencing, whatever you want to call it, are familiar with this problem. Um, but I think a lot of integrators aren't familiar with the opportunity that something like this presents um, as a as sort of a problem solving product, so talk about the product a little bit and exactly what it does. Sure, yeah, I appreciate you recognizing that's exactly what we were attempting to do is sort of think through the boardroom and the large meeting room scenario, like let's say a learning room in a classroom environment at a higher ed campus or any of those situations where you just can't get away with one camera um, for your integration with Skype for Business or you know, WebEx or GoToMeeting. You know, and, and we've seen this trend, right? I mean, we've all even written little blogs about it or seen you know, uh, in our, our daily doings, uh, integrators especially, of course, um, but I get asked all the time, well, when is QSIS going to integrate with Skype for Business? You know? <laughs> and, um, and there's many ways to integrate. Um, you know, there's, may, there's ways that are audio only, like SIP integration for telephony with, with GoToMeeting or with uh, uh, Skype for Business. But there's a lot better way, which is using the camera and your audio from your, your echo canceling and DSP in the room and taking advantage of that higher quality of audio experience and now we're just bringing the video experience to that equation. So the Core 110 you mentioned we launched last year, it's got a USB port on the back of it that bridges audio. Well, hopefully in the next few months, we'll be able to do some things with that along the lines of video. Uh, in addition to that, we, we came out with this uh, box called the IO USB bridge, and that's to give you back some flexibility in the room. Um, the problem we're trying to solve is if you look at any of the other current products on the market that allow you to do integrate Skype for Business or link into a boardroom or a meeting room, they all allow you to only do one camera or multiple cameras, but at a higher cost, much right. higher cost. And then you're still stuck with one USB port in the room to bridge to a computer. So you sort of have to make this choice, well, do I, do I install it at the in-room rack PC and plug right. it in permanently there, or do I use some USB extenders and get it to the table with a hub, a USB hub? It's just not very elegant. Um, and frankly, you know, QC, we're always trying to think about what technologies were invented for, you know, and, and the network seems to be invented for that kind of scenario, of uh, many to many or, or one to many, rather than using USB, which is more of a direct short haul connection between a device like your phone or your right. headset uh, or things like that. So we, we're kind of doing the best of both worlds. We're giving you the ability to use the network as a matrix and connect as many cameras as you want in that learning room. Let's say you have learning pods in a large ca classroom environment. You have a camera focused on the, the prof up front. And then you want to be able to switch seamlessly between all of those learning pods uh, camera positions. So this system, this system that we've developed will allow you to do that without ever breaking down the call that's going on with your either lecture capture or Skype for business uh, that's, that's recording or, or transmitting that to the far end. So hardware-wise, I get it, and I totally, uh, I mean, I think the, the integration community will get this, uh, especially someone who's been involved in actually trying to figure out how to build a system in a seamless way um, right. to integrate those. What about the user interface experience of that, though? What does that look like, and what are the options that are available there? Yeah, that's a great question. So the way we're managing that is if you install QSIS for your audio and your control and your video now, 
you'll be able to use a canned UCI, which is basically a user experience on a touchscreen. We have this thing called the TSC7, which we also launched last year, and we've now enabled USB audio and now video bridging off of that port. So now you have this device sitting on your tabletop, in the case of a meeting room, um, and you can plug your laptop in there, but also be able to control the camera position. Uh, we can do uh, uh, aiming of the camera with a video preview of the actual camera stream right on our touchscreen. Um, but we've also not, we haven't locked any of that down for AMX or Crestron. So if you have an inst installation or existing ability where let's say you're standardized on AMX and or Crestron, we allow you to get all the hooks to the, that user experience that we have put in our own control package to allow you to put that on a touchscreen control for Crestron or AMX. So you don't have a either or scenario. You don't have to, you can pick and blend uh, the systems together. And, and obviously, since it's all network based, I mean theoretically, you could build your own user interface or build it into something that already existed, right? That's absolutely just network controllable. And what about uh, right. iPad and iPhone and and Android devices? I mean, theoretically, couldn't they control this as well, or is, is that a little bit more complicated? Well, actually, the current QSIS platform only supports iOS. We're working on Android uh, as we speak, but the iOS app that we have called UCI Viewer, it's identical to the UCI Viewer we run on our own uh, okay. native touchscreens. So you could actually aim your camera from your iPhone or your iPad or tablet uh, and have the same user experience you've designed in QSIS Designer in our UC UCI design tool. Uh, I'm not sure how many of our viewers are familiar with QSIS as a control platform, but we do have a full uh, graphical user interface designer that an integrator can use to create elaborate control surfaces and have it natively integrate with QSIS. Uh, so that would be available on your iPhone or iOS uh, device. And I assume that this is all going to be in your booth at uh, Infocom, right? I mean, I have right. a chance to see everything at Infocom. You're in booth, um, I'm looking up over here to see if I have your booth yet. So yeah, the, I don't the remember. Central hall, I have it. Central Hall, booth 10507, so 10507. Um, and you'll have that there. You'll have the 110F. You'll have all the the new uh, meeting room products that you've launched over the last year and a half. Um, any other surprises we can expect? Well, no. We uh, we'll have it all sitting there, waiting for you to look at. In fact, uh, I'll give you a sneak peek of our booth design. We have two meeting rooms that are isolated from each other, and we'll be doing calls over Skype for business. Uh, using our camera solution and m multiple AV bridges sitting under tables and the TSC. So you'll be able to see exactly functionally how, how this yeah. thing works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, but we're good. really excited. It's, it's part of the whole software package. We're keeping our promise that this is not just a DSP solution. QSIS is very much an audio video platform uh, at a software layer. So this is the way we, this, this is why we can do these cool things uh, inside of QSIS. Well, congratulations. As I said, I mean, you guys moved from, you know, recognized as a, an audio company, speaker audio company, into a, a meeting room and collaboration company um, in a short period of time. You've been very successful there, and you brought on some great new people that, to help you out. So congratulations on sort of the movement in that direction. Of course, yeah, go by your you. booth at, at, um, in the Central Hall in, in uh, booth 10507. Um, you'll have all the products there, and of course, uh, you can follow along. Uh, we'll, we'll actually be there at uh, at your booth, and we're going to shoot videos of all these little stations that you have set up. So all you have Very to do is go to our video search window at raypubs.com slash infocom16, 2016, sorry, and you'll be able to uh, follow along with all the product videos that we shoot, and I think you and I are going to, you're going to give me like a personal tour. Uh, that's right. That's what I can't promised. wait for it. Yeah, well, so uh, I appreciate that and look forward to it. Thanks for joining me today, and, and have a great flight, and we'll see you there next week. All right, cheers. Bye. All right, take care.